Okay, I'll be honest, I really like this question. It's telling us that there are four different odd integers, okay? And statement one says that they're consecutive odd integers. Statement two says that the greatest is six more than the least. Well, think about these two statements for a moment. We know that there are four different odd integers. We already knew that. Statement one says that they're consecutive odd integers. Statement two says that the greatest of them is six more than the least of them. If they're consecutive odd integers, of course the greatest is six more than the smallest. And conversely, if we know that we have four different odd integers such that the greatest is six more than the smallest, then of course they have to be consecutive odd integers because we know that they're all different, we know they're all odd, and we know that the greatest is six more than the smallest. So what does this mean? It, it means that these two statements are inferentially equivalent. We can infer statement two from statement one and we can infer statement one from statement two. So in my book, I explain why this means that we can eliminate answer choices A, B, and C without even reading the question. And you can actually read about that for free in section two of my book on quantreasoning.com. So now I can just choose which of the statements I want to evaluate. It doesn't really matter because they're saying the same thing effectively. If the statement is sufficient on its own, the correct answer will be D. And if it isn't sufficient on its own, the answer will be E. All right, so if I know that they are four consecutive odd integers and I know that their sum is 64, would I be able to figure out where they are in the number line? I mean, if I move them up the number line, their sum would get bigger. If I move them down the number line, their sum would get smaller. So there can only be one particular point on the number line where this set of four integers could be if we know that their sum is a specific number, in this case, 64. So we don't actually have to find out where they are in the number line. We just have to realize that there can only be one possible point, or I guess four points, uh, where these four integers would have to be in order for their sum to be 64. And that would determine definitively the value of the greatest of the four numbers. So we can stop here and say, yes, each statement is sufficient on its own. We would be able to find the value of the greatest integer if we wanted to. And the correct answer is D. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.